Hello everyone, and welcome to the Criterion Connection. I'm Wade, and we're joined by returning guest Diana. The Moira the sorry, the Moira Rose <laughs> of this show because well this is like the first time you've actually used your natural hair. Almost. Yeah, you've always used a <laughs> wave. This is the first time you've used your natural hair color. And we're doing it because we're we're doing something very sleek. We're doing something that's not goofy. Well Rosemary's baby wasn't goofy, but you know what I mean. Like, this is very serious. This is an Oscar-winning movie. Has some humor. Apparently, according to, <laughs> according to Hulu, it's a comedy. Yeah, dark comedy. Dark, very, very dark comedy. Anyway, so this is a movie by uh, Bong Joon-ho. Mm -hmm. It's the movie that a lot of people were saying, it's foreign, it should be best picture. Well, it's a great movie, so shut up. Right? Yeah, it's uh, the first foreign film to win best picture. Yes. Um premiered in 2019. It was a big festival darling. Bong Joon-ho is an amazing filmmaker and he's a very funny, kind person and that really comes across when he was touring this film. Wonderful human being. Yeah, I got to see this in September of 2019 at Fantastic Fest and I was just blown away by the film and also the Q&A afterwards and I watched it again last night. And we saw it together. Did we mention what film we're reviewing? Oh, we're, we're doing Parasite. Parasite! <laughs> but then, again, then again, you're watching this movie and you see on the title, Criterion Connection, Parasite 2019. What are we talking about? <laughs> um, but yeah, like, we saw it together. Mm -hmm. It was at that one theater. There was times. a lot of old people in that theater, and they were just like, yeah. what's going on? Um, so Good crowd, though. Yeah, so this is a South Korean film. Mm -hmm. um, set in Seoul. Set in Seoul. Uh, we're not going to mention that you're a big BTS fan. I mean, you're wearing a shirt. So I have a Bong Joon-ho BTS RIP collaboration shirt, which is one of my favorites. Yes, I know. You love <laughs> BTS and you love Bong Joon-ho. Yeah. So, um, and you've made me listen to BTS enough to where I'm like, they're, they're catchy. Yeah. And we watched this a few times. Yes. So basically it's about the Kim family and they're not doing too well in life. Mm -hmm. Somehow the son gets involved with the Park family to be a tutor. Yeah, one of his, his mutual acquaintances brings him this job opportunity, which leads to then his sister having a job opportunity, and his, his, dad, his dad, and then his mom. Yes. And things kind of unfold, but the film overall contrasts the two families from these two very different classes. It's very about the class system. It's very about which that's typical Bong Joon Ho. A lot of his films are about classism. Yes, so this is uh this is one of the better ones. I uh, no, I shouldn't say better ones, but it's uh there's a lot. I think it's more accessible. It, it's less more accessible. genre. Yeah, than this his other is ones. very. It's I'm we're gonna basically praise this movie. We're both like <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna praise it. Uh, the movie is so dense. Like every single shot, there's something there. Like especially so when you're in when you're in the Kim household. Um, it's just like layers Like he's standing like, you know, the father, uh, I forget his name. I just watched it last night. Anyway, apologies. Uh, he's a great actor, by the way. So he, the one that's in a lot of Bong Joon's films. Yes. Films. Yes. Him. Um, I apologize below. I'm going to put the name of the actor. It's blanking on me right now. It's Sunday night. I'm tired. So yeah, we have, he's standing there and there's a hallway behind him. There's so many things going on. Um, and what's great about it is there's a lot of, it tells the story in multiple ways without dialogue mm -hmm. or character. It's very about like architecture. Yeah. Like you have their basement, they live in a basement apartment, so they're below ground. They're almost subhuman, I ideally if you look at that and he, it's all cluttered and claustrophobic, yeah. their opportunities are limited. But then you go into the park house, it's very modern, it's very vast and uh, a lot, uh, elegant and huge, meaning there's like so many possibilities they can have. There's no limit on opportunities because the house is so big. Yeah, there's a lot of juxtaposition between um, the Kim family and the park, park family, of course, with the architecture. And then the very opening scene of the film is from the inside of the home looking out. And that has a lot to say in regard to them being, you know, low income, low class. They're just like always in the inside looking out at these things that they want. 
And even they like, have. and even like exterminators just spraying stuff. Yeah. Like, oh man, that sucks. And it opens in the the parasite or like the opening credits have like the spiraling imagery, which kind of looks like a bug when you look at it. Like that was one of the things that stood out to me was like one of the very first images or like scrolling text that you see in the film has this kind of parasitic yeah. look to it. And then there's also that scene like another thing with them looking out like at the park house, so they're looking out, and I believe it's the yeah the, the Kim son. He's reading a book lay on the ground because they're looking out. They they have a different view outside. It's the the sky's the limit. There's nothing that can stop them. And so many, just so many things. And what I like also want to praise about the movie is the pacing of it. Yeah. Like once you get to Act Two with the housekeeper, and it just totally flips. And that twist happens exactly halfway into the film. Yes. It happens a hundred and three minutes into it. A two, uh, two hour and or an hour, it happens an hour and three minutes into the film and a two hour and six minute film. Yeah, so like it's, yeah. it's it's so, I think it's so precise and intricate. It's almost like an elegant kind of opera or an mm -hmm. orchestra piece. Like it's so, yeah. the fact that it's so meticulous. Yeah, Bong's meticulous. He storyboarded everything. He yeah. had a very clear like I was clear watching for this because we I was looking at some other like kind of. YouTube videos of kind of like, you know, kind of gathering info for this, but there was something brought up about the, uh, by the way, <laughs> we have the Criterion version. Yeah, right there. it's so it's nice. Your, it's yours. It's mine. So it's yours. Parasite, actually, the Criterion edition was released on my birthday. So this yes. was a fabulous birthday present that I received. Uh, but I would highly recommend just, I mean, just look at it. Yeah. It's just amazing. We're jumping ahead. With the recommendations, um, but there's a mention of like the food that they, they feed the sun, and it's how like you know it's like a what was it it's like, it's like a rom dom or whatever it was. Yeah. Like apparently that's like a poor person's. Food. It is, yeah. And like he meticulously. But they make it so upscale. Yeah. For this family, he they're like, it... oh, but let's put steak in it and yeah. all of these fresh fresh vegetables. But he was meticulous and chose that, and he also was meticulous. I didn't notice about like the uh, the Native American imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, like the sun, like they're just like, oh, it's just fashion, but it's like a lot of like genocide, a lot of crazy well, stuff. Well, and then happened. they have the moment where there's a tent outside, and they say, oh, the tent is very high quality. It's from America. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but no, <laughs> no tent is really high quality. It's a tent. Yeah, it has a lot to say about Korea and especially rich people that can afford these luxuries. Their opinion on America and that America is the best of the best but yeah. it's like no here's a uh, here's some gray <laughs> poupon like because that's fancy in the 1980s but they you know they probably think it's fancy because it's american uh so i okay from our producers they said um that it may not be from america so correction there uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah like uh but the tent was from america should we mention <laughs> spoilers spoilers okay Right below, there will be the time code of when to join in with no spoilers. But can we talk about how crazy that reveal of the, the bunker? Oh, yeah. Insane. I yeah. was like, what? Even the camera work switches. You get yes. really, like, frenetic, fast-paced POV, like, chasing down the stairs. <sighs> so good. It's just, it's just so great, and, and it really changes the movie altogether. Yeah, I like the movie even more once the turn happened, because it was a great movie and there was you know the family moments you, and the drama and stuff like that and there was a little humor but and you're also wondering it was surprising and you're also wondering how are they going to get caught how are how are they going to pull through it's one of those things like but then you throw the housekeeper and the whole the old housekeeper the old housekeeper yeah. and you know the bunker it just changes the whole tone of the movie i think that the kids become more desperate oh yeah and uh especially that scene with the phone when they're kind of tackling each other for the phone like that's that's a great scene. And then just culminates to, like, the fall of the father. Yeah. And how, like, the great scene that you mentioned about the rain and the tent, uh, the flooding of their home. Yeah. Like, that's such a, like, they're on the high rise, but then uh, it's flooding at the Kim's house. And it's worth mentioning that the homes in the film, the, the semi-basement of the Kim family than the nicer home of the Park family. Those were all built. Like, they weren't real locations. Like, those were built on a set. Um, the basement bunker of the Park's home and also the second floor of their home was a separate set. And one of the only 
one of the only locations that was an actual real location was when they were filming the scene going back to home back to their home when it was raining all of that was real locations and also the location when they're at like the stadium the sports complex and bong actually used that location in um the host yes yeah same location um yeah then that just leads to the whole downfall of the father and uh people die at the end yeah. i didn't think it was gonna get that that, that violence in the end it's so smart in the use of slow motion because you get the the keys like there's a struggle for keys and then the park father smells the the person from the bunker and that triggers the dad and then yeah. just, just stabbings stab and blood and <laughs> sanity and uh pretty <sighs> I don't want to say. It's a weird ending. It's not bittersweet ending. No. It's not a good ending. It's not, that's not a good It ending. is a good It's ending. a good ending. It's not a happy ending or a sad ending. It's a kind of a weird... It's a hope hopeful. Yeah, it's a weird hopeful yeah. ending. Because it's like one of those things like, you know, deep down, they're probably not going to raise the money to, to get to buy the house. But they might. It's they're the, like, they're so close at that. It's, 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 you know, South Korean, but it's kind of the idea of the American dream of you can achieve what you want if you work hard enough yeah and then you have this insane backstory yeah so man <laughs> a lot to unpack uh, in this movie the cinematography is great okay so spoilers end here cinematography is great the acting is fantastic the direction is fantastic the store is the score is fantastic the set design is fantastic this movie is fantastic it's all around and while you say that that makes me remember that on letterbox for the past you know over a year since I, I first saw the film I had this film at a 4.5 so it was just like a hair away from a perfect 5 out of 5 stars on letterbox last night I was like there's not this film could not be any more perfect like how could yes. this movie be better so yes. it was like all right five stars like five out of five parasite I haven't watched it since we saw it in the theater and well until last night and yeah, I gave it like a four, four and a half, or whatever. Maybe I wasn't feeling it, but when you really look into the, you dig into the minutia, when you really dig into the core of it, you're like, this movie's. Yeah, like much how perfect. could it be? How it, there's nothing that could make it even better. Yeah, it's it's so well crafted, and it's yeah. just there's attention to detail, not just in the design or character decision, but in the actual pacing and editing which is mm -hmm. one thing i'm a very big stickler in because if you have a slow burn movie and it goes nowhere it's going to i'm going to lose it's just going to lose me mm -hmm. this one it keeps you interested and throws curveballs every time but they're always realistic curveballs they're not like oh yeah, an alien so many, showed up so many callbacks and yes. just smart just like one-liners that once you see it a second time you're like oh that meant and the star that comes back and and the star like i said actor below um, oh and there's three dogs there's three dogs um but yeah <laughs> like the actor as i mentioned the kim father fantastic yeah fantastic he's one of the highlights of this movie not just for bong joon ho's direction but him in particular <laughs> everyone else is great but i think he's a standout yeah uh so the big question is <laughs> would you recommend parasite to to the audience here to the youtube watchers yeah i don't know if you would if you would, uh, if you would. Um, let me think about it. Yeah, I, I would recommend purchasing the Criterion <laughs> Collection yeah. Edition. Yes. Um, or even just regular Blu-ray, but this one has some really good special features. Yes, the supplements are great, I've heard. Yeah. Um, I've not been able to watch it because I have to borrow it from you. <laughs> but, yes, um, let's see. For me, a pretty much perfect movie that I think is fantastic. I will not recommend this to anyone. Psych! You should watch it with your eyeballs. You should, everyone <laughs> should watch it. This is a great film. Uh, if you can get past the subtitles, because I know some people can't. But then again, you're watching a Criterion review, so chances are you're used to subtitles. Let's be real. Um, so yeah, that's Parasite, everyone. Go watch it if you haven't already. What have you been doing? It won an Oscar. And listen it. to BTS. Not at the same time. No, obviously you can't, not. You, you get, you but gotta Bong get loves BTS. BTS loves Bong. And and get this amazing Criterion collection. Yes, and also I think as of the as of when we were recording this, I think there's a Barnes and Noble fifty percent off sale. There is, 
Yeah. And I hate you, Criterion, because you did a flash sale for 50% off. And I'm like, oh man, I wish you did this when I then when I got paid. And then when you're doing the Barnes and Noble sale, I'm like, oh. Yeah. And also a Black so Friday. So pick it up, Barnes and Noble. And then pick up Rosemary's Baby and Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And then uh, go back and watch the you know, episodes that I'm on. Yeah, those are the episodes you're on. You're going to be on more. Uh, so before we head out, I have to ask you two questions. Favorite BTS member? I know the answer, but the audience doesn't. And. Uh, I believe you have a podcast, so plug away. Oh, yeah. Uh, Fair BTS member, Park Jimin. Jimin, I knew it. RM, Rap, Rap Monster, is my second favorite. Okay. But, yeah, Jimin. Team Jimin. Uh, yeah, Jollo of Month Club podcast. It's my monthly podcast, and in between I have bonus episodes talking about film festivals and year-end episodes, which Wade will be on, talking about, you know... The ten movies we saw this year, I guess. That's gonna be tough. <laughs> That's this gonna be year. a really tough one. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that Saint Maud comes out before the end of December. That way, I can put that on my list. But yeah, Jollo Month Club. It's on Anchor FM. Anywhere that you stream uh, your podcast, listen to that. Do you right. like horror thrillers and Italian films, and me just talking to a different guest every month. Am I going to have to put Sonic the Hedgehog on my top ten now? <laughs> it's one of the ten films you saw. We saw Tenet. That's on there. That's Tenet. Two. That's two that's movies. That Tenet is in the ten. <laughs> uh, like always, like, subscribe, share. All that stuff you do on the Criterion Connection. All, stuff all that stuff. Um, so we're going to do... We have plenty of plans for the rest of the year. I know Joe and I. Don't worry, guys. We are doing Ghost Dog. Just going to let you know, we're going to do it, because Jim Jarmusch, also, I've never seen the movie, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, Joe, anyway. uh, Joe will be back for that one. Yes, yep. Joe will be back for that. Uh, we had two guests, you know, Scott and you, you guys will be back, of course, but Joe will be back next week. Uh, so until next time, I'm Wade. I'm Diana. And we will see you later.